Hello, my name is Kristen Riley and I'm a fellow in minimally invasive GYN surgery at the Penn State Milton S. Hershey Medical Center in Hershey, Pennsylvania. And today I'm going to be talking to you about a case report in the Green Journal. There have been two reported cases of bowel obstruction or injury after tubal occlusion contraceptive insert in the literature. Both occurred secondary to uterine perforation or migration. We present a rare case of bowel perforation after placement of tubal occlusion contraceptive insert. Our patient is a 37-year-old Gravita 2 Para 2 who underwent placement of a tubal occlusive contraception at an outside hospital. Her obstetrical history was significant for two-term vaginal deliveries, and her medical and surgical history were non-contributory. Prior to placement of tubal occlusion contraception, she used Depo-Provera for contraception. Within two days of placement, she had right-sided pelvic pain, nausea, and constipation. Her symptoms worsened, and she presented to her physician for evaluation approximately two weeks after her procedure. A flat plate x-ray showed malposition of the tubal occlusion contraceptive located within the myometrium and in the pelvis near the midline. She presented to our office in referral from her gynecologist. On physical examination, she had diffuse abdominal tenderness to palpation greater on the right than the left. The decision was made to move forward with a laparoscopic removal of the tubal occlusion contraceptive and bilateral salpingectomy the following day. At the time of laparoscopy, perforation of the insert was noted through the fundus of the uterus. The perforation went into the small bowel and completely through the mesenteric aspect. The fallopian tubes were removed. Because of a through and through bowel perforation, colorectal surgery was consulted intraoperatively. Perforation of the terminal ilium on both the medial and the inferior lateral walls extending into the root of the mesentery within four centimeters of the ileocecal valve was identified. Due to the location of the bowel perforation, laparoscopic ileocecectomy was constructed with construction of a stapled functional end-to-end -end ileocolic anastomosis was performed. The patient did well and was discharged to home on postoperative day number three. She was seen for follow-up three weeks after surgery and reported normal bowel function. She's been seen at six months postoperatively and continues to do well without residual bowel symptoms. Our case illustrates a rare but significant complication of tubal occlusion contraceptive placement. Only two similar cases have been reported in the literature. Morbidity to our patient was minimized due to the timeliness of diagnosis and the availability of a skilled laparoscopic colorectal surgeon. This case illustrates the teaching points that Persistent post-procedural pain after tubal occlusion contraceptive placement should prompt further investigation. Multiple imaging techniques can be used in the diagnosis of a tubal occlusion contraceptive complication. And laparoscopy has a role in the management of malposition of the tubal occlusion contraceptive.